Good day, grade 12s, and welcome to your life orientation lesson. My name is Sibusi Somasombuka, aka the Swaggy School Teacher. So in today's lesson, we're going to have a look at democracy and human rights. Uh, the first part of that topic, and I know you guys are very familiar with the topic because you've been doing it uh, throughout uh, life orientation and your schooling career. And you know, today's topic or what it focuses on is really something that is very dear to my heart and as you guys are becoming independent people um, in our country and you guys turning 18 very soon or have turned 18 you know you have the responsibility to become a responsible citizen and in practicing and exercising your rights and that's why I, this topic is particularly dear to my heart and you know it really prepares you uh, for what is out there and what you can do as a South African to make the changes that we need to better our country as well. So at, by the end of today's lesson you'll be able to evaluate your position on discrimination and human rights violation. So here we're looking at what is your stance? What is your opinion when it comes to discrimination and human rights violation? And what are you doing to sort of um, campaign and advocate for human rights in our country and equality? And then you'll also be able, or you also learn how to participate in discussions, projects, campaigns, and events which address discrimination and human rights violation. So can you think of discussions, talks, conversations that people have, or projects that run in your community or in the country, or campaigns and events that address discrimination and human rights violation? You know, I can think of a lot during this pandemic, you know, uh, a part of, a part, uh, apart from us going through this pandemic or living through this pandemic, Pandemic. We also experience events of women being abused in our country um, and people being discriminated against because of the color of their skin in our country and across the world. You know, so what can you think of any discussions and projects and campaigns as well as events that address such issues in our country or in the world? You'll also be able to evaluate the outcomes of these events and campaigns as well. So, you know, um, being a responsible citizen is a huge responsibility and we, we really need to be able to exercise um, our rights in our country as well. So uh, a couple of new words that you need to learn, and you've heard me mention them in the previous slide as well, are events, campaigns, violations, and projects. So campaigns are a planned series of actions that are intended to achieve a particular aim. Events are planned occasions or activities. Violations, uh, it is when you're interfering with a person's rights, doing something that is against the law. And projects are planned activities that have a specific purpose to improve something, usually take place over a long period of time as well. So can you think of any of these that take place in our societies? All right, so like I said, you guys have a huge duty to fulfill um, as a citizen in our country. And part of that has to do with you being aware of the rights of people, you respecting other people's rights and you promoting other people's rights as well. So do you know your rights? And do you know how you can stop yourself or how you can prevent yourself from violating other people's rights? Can you spot, you know, through a conversation that two people are having, whether somebody's rights is being violated there, through people's actions as well? You know, some people are structurally excluded in the society and that's not always in the words that people say as well. Um, and then uh, being a responsible citizen also includes or be you being concerned about the welfare of others. Do you have Ubuntu? You know, um, it's an African philosophy that says, I am because you are. Are you concerned about the welfare of other peoples? Do you care about other people? And then being a responsible citizen also looks at you taking part in campaigns and projects and events uh, that fight against the violation of human rights. So how are you actively participating? about human rights violations or discrimination. So you see these things happen in your society, but what is your opinion? What is your, what are you saying about these certain things? Are you sitting at home just tweeting, ignoring that these things happen because they don't affect you? Or uh, do you have a foul opinion and, and you speak from a sense of privilege because you don't know that these things happen? Um, you know, so what is your stance? And your stance is, you being able to critically analyze all of that stuff. 
Um, being a part of, a, uh, of, of being a responsible citizen is also being a, a law-abiding citizen and participating in civil and political activities, as well as being able to vote in elections and pay your taxes as well. You guys, some of you have turned 18 or turning 18 real soon, so you'll be able to work and be able to vote and pay taxes so you can contribute to the government's income because you know that's how government collects its income in order to provide the services that it provides such as education, infrastructure and healthcare as well, et cetera. Now, it says here, um, if you evaluate your position on discrimination and human rights violation, you critically analyze, you know, based on your own viewpoints, your behavior and your attitudes, and uh, towards these issues. So where do you stand? Not because of what your mom or your dad is saying or what your friends are saying, but you know, you see these things happen in our country, you hear about our Bill of Rights, but what are you saying about it, you know? So think about it. And then it says, yeah, you consider your position by taking the following into, the, into account, the Bill of Rights. You know that in South Africa, we have an awesome, awesome constitution that um, has the Bill of Rights in, and it really is just, um, it enshrines values such as inclusivity, inequal I'm sorry, equality, respect, and human dignity. And, you know, we really have an awesome constitution in our country. But with that said, you know, are we practicing, you know, in, in normal life, are we practicing things that enshrine those values as well? You know, are we treating people equally? Are we including people in our country? Are we, um, you know, think about it. What are some of the things... Um, that you need to consider when it comes to the Bill of Rights as well. So um, part of this, or some of the rights that we have is to be treated equally, to have dignity and self-respect and to be treated with either as well, to have your own opinion and views uh, and to follow any religion of your choice uh, or that you choose to express your own ideas. You know, we have freedom of expressions, uh, of expression, sorry, to live and work in a healthy environment, to be treated fairly at work, and to speak a language of your choice, and to have access to basic healthcare as well. So just to recap on grade 10 work and you guys looking at discrimination, here are the different types of discriminations um, that we have a look at or that we're exposed to in our society and in our country as well. And that includes disability discrimination. You know, people in the past were not, people with living with disabilities were not given the same opportunities as able people uh, as uh, to education and, you know, in the workplace. And we see now that we've got affirmative action, we've got BE in place to sort of help those privacy disadvantaged individuals. We've got gender discrimination where people are treated differently because of their, uh, their gender, because of their male or female. Um, racial discrimination, something that is very, um, you know, something that was quite prevalent in the apartheid regime where people were treated differently because of their skin color, religious discrimination, social orientation discrimination, you know, um, people being treated differently because of their sexuality, whether they're bisexual, transgender, gay, lesbian, etc. Stigmatization, which is the harmful attitude and abuse towards others based on misinformation, uh, workplace discrimination, xenophobia, and bias as well. I'm gonna have I'm gonna explain all of these a bit more into detail as we move on with our lesson. All right. So the nature and the source, as well as the impact of discrimination. You know, when people are not treated equally in our country, they really aren't exposed to as many opportunities as other people, and that really leaves them behind, not just socially but economically as well. Because if you think about it, if girls are not given the same opportunities as boys then girls will not be able to participate fully in the economy. If men, if sorry, if gay people are discriminated against and they're not given the same opportunities as people who identify as straight, then you can imagine how much of a big deal that is in our society as well. And, you know, part of being a citizen is to feel included and being a part of society as well. So bias, prejudice and discrimination, as well as oppression, have a really, really negative effect on individuals, societies, and our countries as well. Prejudice is when you prejudge uh, somebody. Uh, it is judging people on the basis of untruths and differences. And you know, when you look at all these different discriminations that we have, it's all based on misinformation. You know, um, you know the opinions that we pick up from um, different people or different uh, aspects of our society as well. Stigma is the harmful attitudes 
uh, and abuse towards others based on misinformation and ignorance. And then racism is the prejudice or discrimination based on a person's race. Then we've got bias, oppression, and xenophobia. Bias is to influence in an unfair way or to have a preference that prevents you from looking at facts. So can you give me in the comment section some of uh, examples of, of being biased? All right, Skip, uh, just so that we can all learn from each other. And then oppression means to be kept down by unjust use of force or authority. You know, people use their power in the wrong way uh, by oppressing other people. When you are oppressed, you have no freedom or rights. Or you do, but you cannot exercise in either. And then xenophobia is the prejudice against refugees and foreign nationals. It is, it is the fear and hatred of foreigners and strangers. So I want to know in the comment section, please let me know what are, what are some of the other rights that we have as South Africans in our country? And whilst you write down those rights, also reflect on some of the responsibilities or the responsibilities that do come with those rights as well. You know, because we always forget about the responsibilities as well, because part of the responsibilities is also teaching us how to not take advantage of those rights, but to exercise our rights correctly and make sure that we don't violate the rights of other people as well. And right there, we've got some of the values of our constitution, such as freedom, trust, justice, love, the rule of law, peace, responsibility, uh, or prosperity rather, dignity and equality as well. So discrimination means to discriminate against others by treating them unfairly and unequally because of uh, who they are or what you think they are and because they are different from you as well. So can you think of moments or times in our country where we've experienced that? And have you been discriminated against and how did that make you feel? Um, yeah. And then human rights violation means hurting, disrespecting, or acting against someone's rights. So what are some of the human rights violations that we experience as humans in our country, or we know of other people experiencing as well? And then part of you becoming a responsible citizen is really um, having discussions about these human rights violations in society. And, you know, part of having discussions around it is in educating each other and in raising awareness about these human rights violations, but also at the same time to try and advocate and lobby um, against these issues uh, to the government so that they can come up with better uh, modes of accommodating everyone in the country. So discussions are dialogues, talks and conversations in which people share information, ideas and experiences as well as opinions. They can be formal and informal. So it could be a chat or a debate that you have with your mates. Um, and, you know, again, what is your stance in that discussion? You know, what is it founded on? You know, um, are you just speaking from a point of privilege or are you speaking from a point of being misinformed about certain situation? Or is your opinion, you know, in understanding that, you know, everybody should be treated equally as well. And we can also have these uh, in online discussions such as uh, social media threats on Twitter and on Facebook, you know, um, Twitter and Facebook and all these social media platforms have allowed us to have such discussions and to be able to express ourselves in the best way possible. And we also learn about these things happening to other people, even though they don't happen to us as well. You know, as a male South African, I didn't know how privileged I was until I realized uh, through reading on social media and what my other friends and discussing with my other friends who are females about how um, not so privileged they are. And you realize um, that, you know, when you don't know, or you don't have this information, that sometimes you could be tweeting or speaking from a, a point of privilege as well. And um, it's so important for us to have these discussions uh, on human rights violations as well. Because when we have these um, discussions, then we're able to influence the government in making sure that they implement the right things so that everybody is accommodated in our country. And uh, inclusivity takes place. And then projects, uh, projects that help people whose human rights have been violated usually run over a long period of time, even years. Uh, they are you normally run by NGOs, which are non-governmental organization. And NGOs really help government in, you know, pushing forth 
uh, the idea of uh, treating people right and creating awareness around uh, these human rights violations and discrimination as well. And then campaigns. A campaign is a series of actions that is intended to change something. So there's a lot of campaigns that have been running on social media and on television and on radio. Uh, and one that I can think of particularly is 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence. And, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a campaign that takes over 16 days, but also the purpose of that is not just to stop gender-based violence in that particular in those particular 16 days, but to also remind people that it should be something that is a part of our normal day life and protecting women and protecting children as well. Um, so <clears throat> what other campaigns can you guys think of as well? And then events, and events, like I said earlier, is a planned occasion or activity. It, uh, it may be part of a larger human rights uh, campaign or project. Uh, an event may be organized for anniversary, for an anniversary or, uh, of something such as Sharpeville, uh, the massacre then, or uh, a particular public holiday such as Human Rights Day and Women's Day. These include marches and parades and festivals, or prayer services as well. So in South Africa, you know, we have uh, the LGBTQI, they celebrate Pride Day, which happens in different months of the year in different provinces where we celebrate the rights of uh, queer and gay people, uh, the LGBTQI community. Um, and really what it is, it's an event, it's a fun event, but also at the same time, it's teaching other people about the rights that uh, um, the people of uh, LGBTI community has. So this is a nice way to sort of raise awareness and to educate other people as well. And it also creates support for even people in the LGBTI TQI community to sort of support each other and to voice out their opinions. And you know, there's always projects and discussions towards those events as well. And there are many other events that take place. Um, you know, on women right on Women's Day, uh, there are a lot of activities that take place and events to sort of promote, not to sort of, but to promote um, the rights of women and the rights of humans just all together as well. And then I've got a little bit of a class activity uh, right here for you guys, and we're going to do it together. So if you guys could check out a piece of paper and a pen so you can do this activity with us. I got this... Um, this article on the Mail and Guardian, and it's about um, gender-based violence and, you know, women being treated uh, in a very unequal way in our country. And you can see there that la that lady has a placard and it says, raped by her boss, beaten for her wrong, for the wrong supper. You know, there's a lot of ugly, a lot of ugly reasons why women are discriminated against in society. All right, so it says here, yeah, I'm going to read the article and we're going to answer the questions that follow. Awareness campaign launched in Santon against women abuse. Women dressed in all black stood in pouring rain and formed a row holding placards with headlines of news about women abuse. The women from communications agency Joe, Joe Public United are launching a campaign against women abuse. The campaign is being launched on Thursday, a day after Human Rights Day, Placards reading 360 women are abused daily, raped by her boss, and student raped after drink spiked were held by women dressed in black. Joe Public, Un Joe Public United's uh, Lungile uh, Gunundu says that they launched it in Santon on Grainston Drive because it's a busy road. We are raising awareness on behalf of people opposing women abuse, and we're just trying to stop uh, abuse against women. Gunundu says they hope that the campaign will do something to decrease abuses perpetrated um, against women. We should be aware of Human Rights Day, and we should try to stop women abuse as well as domestic violence that's been happening. The campaign was sparked by, receipt, uh, by receipts uh, shared on social media called the Bill of Rights. The receipt has an estimate of people killed and injured during the apartheid as well. So here are the questions. So, you know, here are the women from Joe Public United and shout out to them who uh, were campaigning against women abuse in our, in our country and really perpetuating the idea of human rights as well, which, is, which are the rights that we all have as people. So the question says, why is there a campaign to stop violence against women? 
why is there a campaign? Why are we are campaigning against this? Uh, is it because it's something that is prevalent in our country? Something that uh, is, you know, on a constant go and is not being stopped? Is government really hearing us about it? You know, uh, think about that and your answers. Question two says, what do you think can be done to ensure that rights of women are not violated? Give five practical suggestions. So what do you think can be done to ensure that the rights of women are not violated? So perhaps um, we can lobby against the government and maybe they can have stricter rules. Maybe our police uh, system can be a lot better. What, what are some of your opinions? What do you think can be done to ensure that the rights of women are not violated? And then the third question asks you to give the women at Joe Public United advice on how to improve their campaign. Because I'm assuming that this is, some, this is something that they do on an annual basis. And then you need to motivate your suggestion. So maybe they need to take a document to the Lutuli House or uh, to government offices, pardon me, uh, so that there can be stringent policies around women abuse in our country and proper sanctions for men who abuse women as well. You know, think about it. What what are some of your suggestions and how the women at Joe Public or how Joe Public United in their campaign can improve, um, you know, their campaign as well? All right. And then I'm going to end of the lesson by with a quote uh, from two of my favorite people. The first one is from uh, Nelson Mandela, former president Nelson Mandela. And he says, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than the opposite, which is hate. Very, very uh, powerful statement there. And then uh, Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu says the differences are not intended to separate. So us being diverse does not mean that we need to be separate or treated unequally. Or, um, or to alienate other people. We are different precisely in order to realize our need for one another. So in our differences, we can really, really help each other by advocating, by lobbying, by campaigning, by having these projects and discussions that fights against human rights violation and discrimination as well. In the next lesson, we're going to have a look at the role of media and democracy, freedom of expression, the extent to which media reporting reflects a democratic society, uh, critical and analysis of media and campaigns, and coverage of sports and sports personalities and recreational activities as well. So thank you so much for tuning in to my lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it to be very, very helpful. Uh, please follow me on Instagram. It's Swaggy School Teacher, at Swaggy School Teacher. And the code to the Google Classroom to, uh, for you to get all these awesome slides uh, and for you to interact with other learners is WriteChair. The code is right, uh, projected on the screen in front of you. And then you can also email me if you have any queries or concerns or need help with your life orientation studying. And my email address is Swaggy School Teacher at gmail.com. Thank you, Matrix, and enjoy the rest of your day. See you in the next lesson. Don't forget to tell your friends about this awesome channel. <laughs> Cheers, guys.